In this video, you'll discover how important factors in your day-to-day -day life play an important role in your immune system's ability to function properly and fight off infections. The choices you make on a day-to-day -day basis are either going to improve your immune system or deplete your immune system. Now, if you have a depleted immune system over here, essentially next time COVID-19 comes around, influenza, whatever it is, not only are you more likely to get it, but also have some pretty negative symptoms that come along with it. Now, if your immune system is functioning well and you're able to fight it off, likely you'll have just minor symptoms, hardly even know you had a problem. So what I'm gonna to talk to you about in this video is the top environmental factors that are going to deplete your immune system and make you more susceptible to getting sick. So stick around to the end, but before we get started, I'm Dr. Zorowski and welcome to the channel. If you're new to the channel, it's a pleasure to have you here. Be sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell, and join our notification community, and I'm gonna help you excel your health and your life. Now, this is going to be part three of a multiple part series on how to improve your immune health. One of the things that I saw with COVID-19 is a lot of people just felt that, you know, with a viral infection, it's random chance that you'll get it, and it's random chance that you'll die for it, but the truth is, is that your body has its own innate ability to fight this stuff off, and I'm gonna teach you how to boost your immune system up so that you can fight this these different uh, viruses off very effectively. So let's go ahead and talk about sleep because when it comes to one of the top things that really depletes your immune system, sleep is a major factor there according to the research. Now what we find with sleep is that not only are you going to have a decrease in T cells, but you'll just have an immunodeficiency problem altogether. Now T cells, you're probably wondering what these are. These are just a special type of immune cell. They're responsible for regulating the immune system response and they're also responsible for actually neutralizing the foreign invaders. These T cells play an important role. There's many different types of them, but the thing that's important to understand here is that sleep is going to deplete your T cells and also just have a negative immune response altogether if you're not getting enough of the sleep. Next thing we'll find here is increase in cortisol. Now, cortisol is a stress hormone, which we'll talk about in depth a little bit more over here, but this cortisol is going to be increased if you're not getting a good amount of sleep. Now, this increase in cortisol leads to many problems throughout the body. One of them is going to be, you know, just an immune deficiency problem, but it also leads to weight gain, okay? Lack of sleep leads to weight gain. And what happens when you have weight gain and your immune system is trying to function? Well, it just can't function as it should. When we look at COVID-19, what's the number one thing in the United States? Nobody's probably told you this. What's the number one thing in the United States that would be a huge risk factor as to whether or not you got COVID-19 and died or not? Obesity is number one, okay? That's a big thing to understand here, okay? So we wanna make sure that we're not having weight gain, we're not having increased cortisol, and we're not having insulin resistance, okay? This is one of the things that's also a big deal. Type two diabetics, COVID-19, immune deficiency, a greater risk of death. When we look at places like New York, guess what? There is an enormous population of type two diabetics there. That's another thing that nobody might've told you about. And when you have insulin resistance, that's not good. Sleep can be correlated with insulin resistance. Also, it's gonna have an increase in inflammation and through the cytokine, resp cytokine response, this is going to equal immunodeficiency, okay? We have to make sure that we're getting a proper amount of sleep. According to the research, what is a proper amount of sleep? Well, on average, it's right around seven hours, okay? Some people can get away with six, some people can get away with eight, or they need eight, I should say. But for the most part, let's say right around seven. Now, the other thing that's important to understand about sleep is it's not just about the quantity of sleep, it's about the quality of sleep. Some people can lay in bed for eight hours, but never fall into a state of deep sleep and not even hardly actually sleep while they're laying there. And so what we wanna do if we're really you know, focus on not improving our sleep. We want to make sure that we're, you know, getting to bed early enough and we're getting a good eight hours of sleep. But the other thing that we want to do is even use a sleep tracker if we don't believe that we're getting into a deep sleep throughout the time. Find ways to actually keep modifying and improving your sleep in order to help boost your immune system. So sleep is a major factor here, okay? Now let's talk about stress. Now this is one that many people face, okay? Stress is a huge thing. I can't tell you how many patients have come in over a COVID-19 so stressed out. I'm like, you know what? The stress response alone is going to make you get the virus if you come in contact with it. And so let's talk about stress and how it works. So the central nervous system, basically, when stress hits it, there's going to be a fight or flight response. Okay. This fight or flight response is completely natural. If we think in the 
time of our ancestors, essentially what happened is, let's say your village was being invaded, or maybe you know some sort of like animal, like a tiger was about to attack. This fight or flight response was good because what happens is it increased adrenaline and cortisol. These are two stress hormones. It is good for those to be increased, but not to be increased for a long period of time because increased in a short period of time essentially is going to improve your immune system. It's going to increase your ability to fight off infection and heal and all the things that are good. But what happens is when we have a chronic immune response, which is the place many people are in today, essentially, and I should say a chronic stress response, uh, what happens is it depletes your immune system. This chronic stress response is going to cause havoc in your body. How are a couple, what are a couple ways that people are having chronic stress responses today? First of all, it could be like work, it could be family, it could be relationships. Those are all ways you could have chronic stress. But one of the ways that I see it today is people watching the news, okay? So like, you know, for instance, when you watch the news, one of the things that is actually going to entice you to keep watching is fear, okay? The news companies knows that, know this. They have clickbait headlines. They're very deceptive with their information. They keep telling people the total number of cases of COVID-19 versus is the number of new cases, like who cares about the total cases, right? Because that's including people who got it and they're completely healthy and they moved on in life, right? Many people correlate total number of cases to total deaths, which is not even remotely true. And so they're giving you information and spinning it in a way that's causing more fear, making you continue to watch. And as this fear response keeps hitting you with all this negative information, you have these hormones just raging in your body, these stress hormones, and it leads to glucocorticoid resistance, okay? This essentially is like a cortisol resistance. So if you're familiar with what insulin resistance is, same type of concept, different scenario, but with cortisol. And so when you get this cortisol resistance, essentially what happens with this cortisol just surging in your body, you have a decrease in antibodies, these antibodies that are responsible for going around and tagging the foreign invaders and even neutralizing some of them. You have a decrease in the ability to identify those foreign invaders. You have a de decrease in white blood cells. This is your army against foreign invaders, pathogens, viruses, whatever it is. This is your army. They're depleted when you have chronic stress. The other thing is you're gonna have a decrease and T cells, which we talked about those right there. And there was a study that they did. In this study, they took 250 plus individuals. They put a group of them under chronic stress and they had another group that were not under stress. From there, what they did is they actually gave both of these groups a virus. And what they found is that the group that was under chronic stress was much, much more likely to go and have an increase in viral infection versus those who were not under stress. So it's very important to make sure we mitigate stress, avoid the situations, turn the news off, whatever it is, avoid stressful situations, practice medication, breathing techniques, be sure to make sure that we're getting uh, things in our life like yoga, which can help uh, decrease stress. And then what I like to do in order to decrease stress is go in and exercise, okay? And that's the next thing on our list, which is incredibly important because when you exercise, you improve your immune defense system, okay? Research shows that time and time again, those who are exercising on a regular basis are gonna have improved immune defense and also a decrease risk and illness, okay? So if you're exercising and the virus comes around and you're getting adequate sleep and you're decreasing stress and you're exercising, guess what? Your body knows what to do with that thing. Your body is smart and it's gonna just wipe it right out instead of the virus wiping you out. And so exercise is important as it also has an anti-inflammatory benefit, which as I mentioned before, through the cytokine reaction, essentially that's going to help improve your immune system. Now, the other thing that I wanna mention here is that this is part three of a multiple part immune series that I did that will help you fight off any virus or any infection that comes your way. Now, if you haven't seen part one, you can click on it right here and I'll also put a link in the description below so that you can really become a master at, you know, just having incredible health and also making sure that you're able to fight off any foreign invaders that come your way. When it comes to exercise, let's go ahead and talk about habitual exercise. Now, what has been shown in the research is that if you have habitual exercise that is just like causing more stress through you know, exercising too much, overtraining, then essentially what happens is that it actually depletes your immune system. So imagine you're somebody who's going in and exercising for two, three hours every single day. That's gonna cause an immune depletion, but habitual exercise, regular exercise that's you know 30 to 60 minutes actually has been proven to do a couple things for you. Not only improve immune regulation, immune regulation is important because if our immune system isn't regulated well and it's working too much, it can lead to autoimmune issues. If it's not working enough, essentially it can just not be there for you when you get hit with a virus or something. So it helps improve immune regulation, 
And it also has been shown to offer a delayed onset of age-related immune dysfunction, which is important because let's take COVID-19, influenza, any of these problems into consideration. Those who have the most devastating impact is going, are going to be those who are elderly, those who actually have other conditions. And so it's important if we can exercise and improve our immune system and fight off that, that, that immune system decline as we age, incredibly powerful. Now, I also want to mention here, like all of these pour into one another. For me, let me talk about me for instance when I have chronic stress I don't get enough sleep when I don't get enough sleep I have increased cravings it's harder to eat healthier during that time and because I'm not sleeping well I don't want to exercise and then it causes more stress and this cycle just keeps on going okay this is how it is for most people I see this time and time again with my patients so make sure that you're working to improve your body function in all ways and you're working to get better quality sleep, reduce stress, and also get exercise on a regular basis. Give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends so that they can boost their immune system and fight off any foreign invader that comes their way. And then check out this video, which is gonna be the next part in our series. It is your immune system that will protect you from all the different foreign invaders, the pathogens, the viruses, the influenza. Your immune system is incredibly powerful. It's your innate ability to actually fight these things off.